All right. Well, I want you to turn your Bibles this morning to uh, John chapter 11. John chapter 11, we're going to be looking mostly at uh, verse 25. John chapter 11, verse 25, as we take a look at this text of Scripture this morning. And uh, as we look at this and uh, recognize uh, what it is that Jesus has said, uh, we also recognize the fact that, you know, uh, th th as Jesus is speaking these words, He's not just saying that this is something that I have the power to do. He is saying, this is who I am. Amen. This is the very truth of who I am. We find here in John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said uh, to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Now, when we look at that, Jesus is speaking these words and saying, you know, this isn't just something that I do. This isn't just some power that I have. This isn't just some strength that I have within me and, uh, uh, you know, some, some kind of a, a magic potion or magic spell or supernatural strength that I can do. This is who I am. Amen? I am the resurrection and the life. And so as we take a look at this text of Scripture this morning in uh, John chapter 11, verse 25, uh, a verse of Scripture, text of Scripture, you ought, you ought to hide uh, within your heart, you ought to memorize and apply that to your everyday life as we begin to think about that. Here it is in this particular uh, chapter, we find uh, uh, Jesus, he's gone off and, uh, you know, he, as he's gone off uh, doing his ministry, word comes to him and, and his word sent to him uh, it, it, the, the, the message is this Lazarus of whom you love he was great friends with Lazarus. He was great friends with uh, Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, and his, he was great friends with them. Uh, it, it, it's this expression, Lazarus, of whom you love, right? He, he's your great friend. He's the, one that, uh, you, he's the one that you love. He's the one that's near to you. He's the one uh, that's dear to you, this great special friendship that they have. You know, as we look at that, uh, the word was sent to Jesus that he's very, very sick, that he's very, very ill, and that he needs to come quickly. And no doubt that Jesus did have this very special relationship with Lazarus, with Martha, and with Mary. He had this unique relationship with them that, that he truly did love them, and they were great friends of, the, of his. But you know, the reality is, when we look at the truth of the Word of God, you know, maybe we've never had this physical relationship and physical friendship that Lazarus and Mary and Martha had uh, with Jesus Christ. But the truth is, the Word of God tells us that God God so loved the world. Amen. And, and so as we begin to look at that, God loves you and God loves me. God loves every single one of us. And so when we recognize the fact that God loves every single one of us, you know, he, he wants to save every single one of us. And if we're sick, if we're ill, or if we're even unto death, and even after we die, uh, for, for our friends and our family that's left behind, you know, as we see here, it, it, Jesus is great over this. It, it, it breaks his heart. In fact, the Word of God tells us right here within this text of Scripture that Jesus wept. And so when we look at this, Word comes to Jesus. As the Word comes to Jesus, uh, the Lazarus of whom you love is sick. And so he sends the messengers on back. And as the messengers go on back, Jesus didn't go right away. Right? It's an urgent time. It's an urgent, you know, they're calling in the family. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, some of you have faced that time within your life as they call in the family. It's, it's, it's the final times. It's the final moments. It's very urgent. Uh, it, it's time for you to come on in. And the family gathers around. And as the family gathers around in those final moments, everybody rushes to get there just as fast as they possibly can, but Jesus didn't go right away. In fact, the Bible says it took him two days to finally get to the point to where he ended up leaving. Now, now is it because Jesus didn't care? Is, is it because that Jesus wasn't concerned about Lazarus? Well, the Bible clearly tells us that he loved Lazarus. And, and was, it, was it that you know, he, he, wasn't, uh, he didn't think Lazarus was going to die? Well, when they finally went, Jesus told his disciples, he said, you know, basically he said it's time to go and visit with Lazarus uh, 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 now. And, and apparently it took them two days to get there. But as we look at this, Jesus told his disciples before they left, well, he's already dead. He already died. In fact, the first time he told them is that, that he was asleep. And then the second time he told them, well, 
He's actually dead because they didn't understand what he was saying. But what's interesting is that Jesus told the messengers that came to him in the first place that this sickness wasn't unto death. And so we begin to ask the question, was Jesus wrong? And and did Jesus not care about what was going on, the urgency of the situation? You know, when Jesus finally did come and he met with Mary, and there as he met with Mary, the crowds followed Mary to come out there and meet up with with, with her. They thought she was going to the tomb, and so they followed her to the tomb, and she ended up meeting with Jesus, and she was very grieved within her heart. And and not only was she very grieved within her heart, the crowds, they were also weeping along with her. And when Jesus saw this, the Bible says that he had compassion upon them. And then the Word of God tells us, that also Jesus wept. But when we think about this, Jesus wasn't weeping over Lazarus because Jesus knew exactly what was fixing to take place with Lazarus. Jesus was weeping because Mary, his friend of whom he loved, was weeping and because she was grieving. Jesus was weeping because the crowds were weeping. The crowds were grieving. And so it wasn't for Lazarus that he had compassion for because he knew exactly what was fixing to take place with Lazarus. It was because of the grief stricken family that he was weeping because of their grief because of their heartache because of their pain and Jesus who loved them and Jesus who loves us grieves the same way but when we look at this text of scripture here in John chapter 11 and verse 25 here it is that Jesus is now uh, first speaking to Martha and as, as Jesus is speaking to Martha and, and begins to uh, proclaim to Martha that, you know, don't worry about your brother. He, he's going to be resurrected. And Martha doesn't fully understand all of it, doesn't fully get all of it. And, and so Jesus then proclaims to her this phenomenal statement in John chapter 11, verse 25. He says there that I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Now, Jesus started this statement off with I am. Now, in the English, it's very easy to overlook that statement of I am as we uh, just kind of read through it and not really understand the full uh, grammatical context of it within the original language and the full impact of it. But in the Gospel of John, you see, we have four Gospels, and the reason that we have four Gospels, we have that four, these four Gospels for a very specific reason because these four Gospels, even though it may seem as though they're telling very similar uh, stories about Jesus, they're telling it from a different perspective. They're telling it from a different uh, viewpoint. And so, for instance, we have the Gospel of Matthew. And so what does the Gospel of Matthew start off telling us? It starts off from the, uh, from the get-go telling us that Jesus is, a, is the Messiah. Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of David. And so what do we see that as? We see in the book of Matthew that Jesus is the King. Then we look at the book of Mark, and what does Mark portray Jesus as? Jesus is presented there in the book of Mark as a servant. The one that didn't come to be served, but the one who came to serve. And then we look at the book of Luke, and Jesus is portrayed there in the book of Luke, as Luke is the historian here, right? And so Jesus is presented there as a man in his humanity. But the Apostle John, he starts off the book of John, the Gospel of John, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He starts it right off the gate, right at the very beginning, telling us exactly his viewpoint, his perspective of being the witness of Jesus Christ in the Gospel of John. In the beginning is the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, John's viewpoint through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that Jesus is God. Amen? And so when we find here that Jesus says, I am, it's interesting that in the Gospel of John, there's seven I am statements of Jesus saying, I am, within the Gospel of John. And so if I say to you, I am Rusty Coon, then I'm just making a a, a statement, or I am the pastor of Mill Creek Baptist Church, and I'm just making a statement of who I am. But here it wasn't just that Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Of course, He is the resurrection 
resurrection and the light. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But what he was literally saying is, I am the great I am. I am God. I am the great I am that Moses spoke to on the mountain in the burning bush. He said, who shall I say sent me? I am that I am. And that's who he was proclaiming that he was seven times in the gospel of John. Here it is that Jesus proclaimed that he is the great I am. In John chapter 6 and verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, he said, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 10 and verse 7, he said, I am the door. In John chapter 10 and verse 11, he says, I am the good shepherd. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. In John chapter 15 and verse 1, Jesus says, says, I am the true vine. And here in this text of Scripture, Jesus is saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And no man, as we look at this, no man could be this because Jesus is this. As we begin to recognize this, he is proclaiming the very truth that he is God. Now, we don't necessarily see this in the English, but you better believe that the Jews knew exactly what Jesus was talking about. Because if you flip on over and look in John chapter 8 when Jesus proclaimed himself as the I am, Jesus then told the Jews, he said uh, your father Abraham longed to see my day and they said what are you claiming to be Abraham? You, you know, you must be crazy, you must be a lunatic what's wrong with this guy? And then he says before Abraham was I am, they knew exactly what he was stating because they tried to stone him. Amen? They considered that to be blasphemy. He was, compl- he, he was t- t- saying that he himself was God. Well, guess what? Jesus is God. So as we look at this, we understand the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. All three being equally God, but all three being three separate beings, but yet there's only one God. You say that's confusing? Yes, it's confusing. In our earthly minds, we can't fully comprehend it, but that's what the Word of God very clearly teaches. We see it very clearly in the baptism of Jesus Christ as Jesus is there in the Jordan being baptized by John. The Father is speaking, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased, and the Holy Spirit is descending upon Him as a dove. Clearly, three separate beings, but one God, and three separate separate personages. Of God. Now, we understand in John chapter 3 16 that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, but we also recognize there in Philippians chapter 2, Jesus, though being God, is basically what that saying, took upon flesh, became obedient to the point of death, even death upon the cross. Very cruel death, very torturous death. So what do we see right here? Jesus, God, He became the sacrifice for us so that the resurrection could take place within us. I am. Who is I am? He is God. God who became flesh. He said, I am the resurrection. And so as we look at this and we understand that He is the resurrection and beginning to recognize the, the fact that Jesus is the, resurrect, or the resurrection, an interesting thing that, that, that we look at right here, he, it, again, He's not just saying, uh, th- this is what I can do, this is the power within me. He already said, if you, you know, destroy this temple, I'm going to rise it up again, right? So obviously He had the power to do that. Obviously that is something that that he possessed, but it's the very fact that this is who he is. He is the resurrection and he is the life. By the way, all life comes through Jesus Christ. As we recognize that all life comes through Jesus Christ, we also recognize that the resurrection only comes through Jesus Christ as well. If we look in John chapter 1, in John chapter 1 we find here, 
that uh, uh, in John chapter 1 and verse 1 is already read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the be- in, he was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life. In who? In Jesus. In Jesus was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Jesus is life, and Jesus is the very one who brings about the resurrection of life. So when we comprehend that, when we begin to understand, here it is that Martha, she wasn't fully comprehending it, she she wasn't fully getting it. You look back at verse 21, Lazarus is dead, Lazarus has been in the tomb for four days, and Martha in verse 21 of Chapter 11 says this, Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. If you'd have been here, everything would have been okay. But Jesus knew exactly what was going on, and we're going to look further at that in just a minute. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. So she had faith in Jesus. If you'd have been here, it would have been all right. But even now that you are here, whatever you ask of God, everything's going to be all right because God is going to give it to you. Then in verse 23, Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Again, Martha's faith is strong. Her faith is not, uh, is not waned in any way even though her brother had died. In verse 24, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Now there will be a resurrection on the last day. And as a resurrection of all of those who are in Christ. And so as we look at that, the Bible says that as the trumpet blows and the sound of that mighty voice, there's going to be a resurrection that the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are alive and remain will be called up together to meet Jesus within the clouds of glory. And so there all of the redeemed are going to be resurrected and in an instant they're going to be changed from mortal to to immortal. Uh, immortal they're going to be changed uh, from these earthly bodies to the eternal resurrected and glorified bodies and that is going to happen at an instant and in a twinkling of an eye that is going to take uh, take place the corruptible will put on incorruptible and so we, we recognize that is going to take place in the last days that is going to take place when Jesus calls his children home and he has that mighty shout and we're going to meet him there in the clouds of glory but Jesus is then further explaining to Martha wait a minute you don't fully comprehend what's about to take place yes that day is going to come but your brother is about to come out of that grave right here and right now and so that's when Jesus said to Martha Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life and he who believes in me will live even if he dies Martha, this is about to take place right now. You're about to see it. You're about to witness it. You're you're about to see His resurrection right before your very eyes. But as we recognize that Jesus is the one who who gives life, Jesus is life. We recognize that it's through Jesus we have a resurrection. Jesus is the resurrection. At this point, Martha had given up hope on her brother. He's dead. He's in the tomb. Not only is he in the tomb, he's been in the tomb for four days. Now, when you look at this, you look at Jewish tradition, when somebody has been in the tomb for three days, there's no hope of them coming back to life. Right? They've been in the tomb for two days. Well, there's a possibility they're still alive. If they've been in the tomb for one day, well, certainly there's still hope for them. Maybe they could come back to life. But for three days, no. There's no way. They're not going to come back. That's why Jesus was in the tomb for three days. Because not only was he considered to be dead, he was dead dead with no hope of coming back. Well, here Lazarus, he'd been in the tomb for four days. Not only was he dead, but he's dead dead. No hope whatsoever. 
You know, when we think about this for just a minute, all hope is gone. All hope of life for Lazarus is gone. There's no hope for him whatsoever. Yes, during the in the last day in the resurrection, he's going to come back. But right now, we have absolutely no hope for him whatsoever. And you know, we look at death, and we look at death as being the final, the point of all things. But what we need to understand for those who are in Christ, death is not the final point of all times. Sometimes we even look at people that are alive. Oh, well, there's no hope for that person. They're too far gone. But see, friends, I want you to understand that Jesus is still alive. Jesus is still the resurrected King of kings and Lord of lords. He's still sitting high and lifted up upon His throne. He's still almighty. He's still all powerful. There is still nothing impossible for Him to do. So we as Christians should never give up hope. For anyone or anything, as long as God is God, which He will always be, as long as Jesus is sitting on the throne, which He shall always be, as long as He's King of kings, which He will always be, there's always hope. Amen? We should never give up hope. There's always hope in Jesus' name. Now when we begin to recognize that and begin to think that here, it was this hopeless situation, it was this hopeless point. Lazarus not just dead, but he's dead dead. What's going to be done about it now? There's hope for him in the, in the final resurrection, but Jesus is saying, no, there's hope for him right here, right now, today. Now something that we need to understand is that all of this took place before Jesus' death before Jesus' burial, and before Jesus' resurrection. Amen? That hasn't happened yet. They haven't seen that yet. Now, Lazarus is uh, one of three within the New Testament that Jesus raised up from the dead. There was two others that Jesus raised up from the dead. And here it is in this text of Scripture. Yes, Jesus did tell them to roll that stone away. Yes, Jesus did call them out with the mighty shout, Lazarus, come out of that tomb. And the dead man, the Bible says, came out of the tomb. They unwrapped the burial cloths from around him, and he was alive. But when we begin to think about this, a lot of people look at Lazarus and say, boy, Lazarus kind of got the short end of the stick because he died. Jesus raised him up from the grave again, but then he turned around and died again. No, he didn't, friend. What did Jesus say right here? Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Even if his body dies again, guess what? He's still going to be alive. You know, Lazarus is still alive to this very day. The moment Lazarus put his faith and his trust, his belief in Jesus Christ, he became alive. That point here it was that his body had died. His body was put in the tomb. Jesus called life back into the body. The living body walked out of the tomb. But the moment that Lazarus put his faith in and trust in Jesus Christ after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He received the Holy Spirit of God that indwelled him, and he was alive at that very moment, truly alive at that very moment, and he lives even to this day, and he will live forevermore. Why? Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and he who believes in him will live even if he dies. Now, Jesus already told the disciples, Jesus told the disciples, he said he's not going to die. Look at verse 4. Verse 4 of chapter 11 says, But when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not unto death. But then he died. So did Jesus... Lie? Was Jesus mistaken? Was Jesus just wishful thinking here that he wouldn't die? Again, verse 4, when, uh, but when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not unto in, in, uh, in death, but for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. For the glorification of God. The very purpose, this whole event that took place 
But friends, when Jesus said that he's not going to die, he meant it. And he kept his word. Lazarus is alive until this very day. Amen. His body was put in the tomb for a little while. Then later on his body was put back in the tomb. But guess what? Lazarus himself is alive. Jesus is God, and every word that God speaks is absolute truth. And you know that Jesus fulfilled every single prophecy of His first coming. We don't have time to go through them all, but let's just go through the passion uh, for just a little bit. The Word of God tells us that Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey. It tells us that in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Guess what? Jesus fulfilled that to the T. Psalm 41 and verse 9 tells us that Jesus would be betrayed. Judas betrayed Jesus. In Zechariah chapter 11 verse 12 through 13 it tells us that money would be paid to the betrayer of Jesus and that that money would be used to uh, buy a potter's field. That exact thing took place. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 7 said that Jesus would be silent before his accusers and Jesus was silent before his accusers. We also find right here in Psalm chapter 22 and verse 18 that the soldiers would gamble for the clothing of Jesus and that was fulfilled to the exact T in Psalm 22 and verse 16 uh, hundreds of years before crucifixion was invented the word of God tells us that the Messiah's hand and his feet would be pierced through Exodus chapter 12 and verse 46 tells us that the Messiah's bones would not be broken and none of Jesus' bones were broken Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10 tells us that a soldier would pierce the side of the Messiah. That exact thing happened to Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 9 tells us that the Messiah would be buried with the rich and Jesus was buried with the rich within that borrowed tomb in Psalm chapter 16 and verse 10. The Bible says that the Messiah would rise from the dead and friends, guess what? He is alive today. He's alive. Yes, they crucified him. He told them that they was going to crucify him. Yes, they buried him. He told them that they were going to bury him. But guess what? Three days later, he rose up out of that tomb just like he said he was going to do. And he is alive and he's a well today because every word in the word of God comes to absolute fulfillment. Look there in verse 26 and it says, Jesus continues to speak to Martha and he says, Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. My mom trusted in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. My mom's body today is buried right up the road at Gifton Cemetery. We have many friends, many loved ones, many people we could call, we could spend all day long calling people out by name. We know have placed their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ. We could take you to their burial sites. But Jesus said they're alive. Then he turned the tide on Martha. He said, do you believe? Do you believe? See, we could look at these scriptures all day long and we say, yeah, that's some interesting stuff and some interesting tales there. And You know, we, we, we know the Christmas story. We know the Easter story and We've had the Sunday school lessons and we've heard the preacher preach, but the fact is, do you believe? As you sit here today, do you believe? Because that's where life comes from. It's given to us through Jesus. He is the source because He is the resurrection and the life, but we have to believe in Jesus. Jesus, believe the gospel, which is his death, his burial, and his resurrection. 
friends, your loved ones who have died prior in the flesh are alive today in the Spirit. Amen? Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. No, there's coming a bodily resurrection one of these days, and Jesus was the first fruit of that. The rest of it's going to be fulfilled in His return. But Jesus is the resurrection and the life. You see, the amazing thing about the gospel is this. We'll go ahead and get our musicians to come on forward. This is the amazing thing about the gospel. Every other religion in the world, every other religion in the world will tell you how you can work your way up to God. How you can climb that ladder to get to God. How you can climb that mountainside to get to God. Christianity is the only religion that said, y'all can't do it on your own. Guess what? They can't either. (laughs) They said, I'm going to come down to you. I'm going to get a hold of you. And I'm going to bring you to myself. Isn't that a phenomenal thing that Jesus did for us? I'm going to come get you. Bring you home with me. And there we shall be with the Lord forever. Amen. Let's all stand this morning. Maybe you're here today and you've been trying to work your way. Trying to live the good life, trying to be the good person, trying to do all the right and the wrong, uh, 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 right things and stay away from the wrong thing. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be a good person. Every one of us ought to want to be a good person, but that's not what's going to save you. Only belief, only faith in Jesus Christ is going to save you. That's it. So just as Jesus looked at Martha that day and said, Do you believe? I ask you today, do you believe? If you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? Heaven or hell? Do you know that you know that you know that you're saved? Because you put your faith in Jesus. If you don't know that today, Friend, would you come today and believe on Jesus? Say, well, I don't know exactly what to do. Come on up here. It's just belief, but I'll be glad to lead you and guide you as you come here. Church, would you pray this morning during this invitation time that not one lost soul will leave here today without knowing Jesus as the Lord and Savior? What greater day to get saved than on Resurrection Sunday? Amen. You come as God so leads. You need prayer for anything else? You need to make any other decisions? You come as God so leads. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you.
this for you today. This invitation for you to come home. Listen, Jesus will bring you to that eternal home. He is the resurrection and the life. He's your only way. And there is no other way. You know, as we continue in this invitation, we're not going to continue much longer, but I want you to know here today, maybe you're here and God is tugging at your heart. That you're not saved, that you don't truly have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you're the most faithful person to this church. Maybe it's the first time you've been here. It doesn't matter. Don't let pride keep you from walking down this aisle trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because I want to tell you what. There'll be no pride in hell. Not even from Satan himself. But what there will be if you come to Jesus today is a whole lot of rejoicing. The Bible says there's more joy in heaven over one who repents than 99 righteous. And there will be rejoicing in this room as well. Would you come to him? Listen, the only thing that's final is eternity. That's eternity in heaven with Jesus because you've believed on him. Or that's eternity in hell. But it's your choice. Jesus loved you enough to die for you, but you have to believe on him and trust him. And again, if you have not done so already, you come as God so stirs. Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you. Yeah.